trip behind the scenes with future country rock blues kings and queens discover them first with palm mash tv palm mash tv well hello there it's palm mash tv time again thank you so much for joining us we've got another great interview coming up for you in just a moment or two but uh, as always, hit that subscribe button and the bell, and you'll be notified of any new episodes coming your way. And leave a comment on the comment section if you'd like. We'd love to hear from you there. And uh, you can also check us out on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash TV. And if you'd like to, you can leave a comment on everything you see there, or send us an inbox, or even follow us. We'd love that. Or you can leave us an email at palmashtv one word at gmail.com. And if you're a band or solo artist that want to be on the show, send us an email. We'll show you how to do that. And also we accept fan mail as well. So send us a fan letter and we'll get back to you as quickly as we can. And all this will be recapped at the closing credits at the end of the show. So stay tuned for that. From Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, we have Ashley Hodla. And I know you're only going to love this lady. And uh, we're going to get right to the interview, which starts right now. Okay, here we are with the interview, and with us from uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, we have Ashley uh, Totala. How are you doing there, Ashley? I'm good, I'm good. How are you doing? Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm doing pretty good. Glad you can make it today. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you began as an artist, because you know everyone has their own story. We'd love to hear yours, Dawn. Um, So when I was 10 years old, I think, I was in dance class. Um, I really wanted to do dance like all the other girls in my school and so I was in um music like music and dance so like kind of like musical theater sort of and uh I was having a great time and I was really excited to be doing the year-end show and then I was also interested in guitar so my parents told me I had to choose guitar lessons or dance lessons because both were too expensive so I chose guitar and then I started taking guitar lessons when I was 11 and I just picked it up really fast. And I went through a few different uh, guitar teachers until I stuck with one for the majority. Um, and yeah, it, they, I, then I, I was like, well, I got to sing too. Like I love to sing and I love to um, write. And I, and I, so I started kind of experimenting with that when I was 12, 11 and 12. Um, and then I got into singing lessons. Uh, I was in a choir from the time I was five. And uh, I ended up joining a different choir with the same teacher um, that was more, more like for my age group. So I did that. Um, I joined a singing group that was like five or so people. So I was very busy after school. And from the age of like 12 to 16, that's pretty much all I did. And then um, I became really interested and focused on finding shows in my area. I'm not originally from Vancouver. I'm from a place called the Sunshine Coast, which is like a small community. that's just a ferry ride away from Vancouver. Um, so like small town vibes, I would perform at coffee houses and uh, benefit concerts and all these little things. And I so I ended up getting um, pretty well known on the Sunshine Coast. And yeah, so I, I pretty much my first gig was when I was 11 and it was at a pub. <laughs> it was for a benefit concert for a little boy that had cancer. And they asked me to write a song and they, they said I could come and play it. But the I had to play and then I had to leave. I couldn't even drink water because I wasn't legally supposed to be there. Um, so that was my first gig and but ever since that first gig it just kind of snowballed and I just got asked to do more and yeah mm. well that well that's quite a story and uh, I'm glad what you're uh, glad of uh, that you do what you do and I've heard your stuff obviously and you're really good at it so thank you um, well tell us about some of the uh, the influences that you grew up with that helped motivate you to be the singer you are today Oh, uh, my biggest influence is Taylor Swift. Um, I'm a huge Taylor Swift fan, always have been since I was like 11. Um, I unintentionally and intentionally would take and still do take a lot of her mannerisms and um, like the way she performs because I think that she's just a, a so smart and I think she's a great performer and a, 
an amazing writer. And so um, when I was younger, I would unintentionally take a lot of those mannerisms um, to the point where it was almost like I had a lot of teachers telling me, you know, you should probably just try and tone it down a bit, become more you. So I did end up trying to do that. And that's what I've been working on in the last few years is trying to become more me, but also realize that there's there's things that you can take from your favorite artists and they'll make you better, but you don't want to become them. Um, but Taylor Swift was definitely my biggest influence um, just because I love a story. My songwriting is very singer songwriter, folky storyteller. Um, I like, that's my favorite kind of song. So her songs that have such a deep meaning and um, a story to them that that's why I loved her so much. And that's what resonated with me. Um, as I got older, I've obviously taken more, you know, I've gotten into different kinds of music, but generally I try and stick with uh, country, country pop. So uh, Taylor Swift, Kelsey Ballerini, um, and, you know, all those kind of women in country. And then, but then I also really like, um, like dubstep songs that don't have any, <laughs> any words. And, and then, you know, there, and then you have the older stuff like the Beatles and, all those people like my music that question's so hard because if you look at my spotify it's just so different <laughs> like it's just i have a playlist that has i call my all music playlist and it has so many songs in it and it's like it starts with dubstep and then there'll be like a song from the 70s thrown in there and then it'll be taylor swift and then it'll be you know like it's just it's so all over the place so i kind of i would say taylor swift is probably my biggest influence but i definitely I listen to everything and everything kind of inspires me in a different way. Yeah, that's true. And of course, you mentioned Taylor Swift. She's definitely a, a great singer. And you also mentioned other bands like the Beatles and that. And, uh, you know, you can't go wrong with legends like them. Well, no. And they're, and obviously, like, they're, they're so famous for all their songs are pretty much four chords, I think. And that's, that's kind of such a, a thing in the music industry is less is sometimes more. And I've been told many times that a good song is able to be stripped down and still be a good song um so people like the beatles taylor swift all these like country artists that i like tim mcgraw like their songs are obviously heavily produced but when you strip them down they still sound really good and that's really important to me with my music too and that's another thing i've learned from them okay yeah and he's another one uh, tim mcgraw I, I definitely loved his music yeah uh, now, I noticed you mentioned Spotify earlier. Are you on any other streaming platforms as well? Uh, yep. So I distribute to all of them. Um, my current album and singles that are out, I use CD Baby to distribute. And um, so they distribute to like Amazon, Apple Music, Spotify, basically anywhere. You just search my name and I should come up. Okay, are you on any uh, any of the social media sites like Facebook and so forth? Maybe you want to tell everybody where you find you there. Yeah, um, I'm on Facebook at, um, I think it's Ashley Hodala 13 um, And then that, I just have like a Facebook page, so I'll do updates on there. Um, probably the best one would be Instagram and TikTok. Um, Instagram, it's Ashley underscore Hodala underscore music. And then TikTok is Ashley Hodala music. Um, I've been trying to be more frequent with the, the TikToks and whatnot. Instagram's kind of more of a personal platform, but I've also been trying to be more active on there with Instagram lives. And I wanted to do a TikTok live the other night and I found out that you can't do TikTok lives unless you have at least a thousand followers. Mm -hmm. So if anyone wants to go follow me on TikTok, then I can do that because that's the platform that's really blowing up right now. And I'd like to to do some lives on there um but i and i post a lot of little snippets on there so i think tiktok's probably the best place to go but um i'm on instagram tiktok facebook i do have a youtube channel um if anyone's interested in going back and looking at where i started i started that channel when i was 11 so mm. when I, very beginning i have videos from when i was 11 all the way up to quite recently i don't post on there as much anymore just because youtube has become such a big thing and I don't have the equipment to kind of be at the level that you need to be to be noticed now like the lights and the professional microphones and all those things um, but I do have all the content still on there from years ago 
Okay, well, get out there, those streaming platforms and all those social media sites she mentioned and uh, follow her there. And I know she would love you for that. And, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I guess we're getting ready to watch the video in a couple of minutes. It's called uh, I Can't Sleep, I do believe. Uh, yes. uh, tell us a little bit about that. It's probably self-explanatory, but tell us a little bit about the song. Um, so I wrote this song probably when I was like 15 and it came out of nowhere. It's not about myself. It's not about a friend. It's not about anyone in particular. I just was sitting down with my guitar and I started singing, you know, I can't sleep thoughts of you rack my brain. And then that's usually how my songs go is I just, I sit down and something comes to mind and then it's like a, it's like 10 minutes and I just like word bomb it. And then I'll go back and edit. But um, if I'm going to write a song, it happens very quickly. So that's how that one happened. And it's a, it's a song about a girl who had like a summer fling. Um, and she thought that they were going to keep in touch. And she thought that it was going to be, you know, this romance. And then it just didn't. And now she's basically saying, you know, I can't sleep. I can't stop thinking about you. Will I ever see you again? Like, if you're back in town someday, hit me up, you know. Typical, like, you know, teenage summer love gone wrong type of thing. But it's an upbeat, happy song. So it's kind of like, if you listen to it, it sounds very upbeat. I play it upbeat. But deep down, it's like kind of like a, a song about yearning for something that you aren't sure if you'll ever find again. So, yeah. Okay. Well, it is a great song. And uh, I, know everybody else, I know everybody out there will love it as well. And we'll get to that in just another minute, but uh, I think that's all the time we have for right now, Ashley. Thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, Thank you. If you got anything new to plug for us in the future, maybe you can come back on. We'll help you plug that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, no problem. And uh, here it is, I Can't Sleep by Ashley Toddler, and it starts right now. I can't sleep, thoughts of you rack my brain. Where are you now? Think of me. Do you remember that hot night in June when it was just me and you? No, I can't sleep. Thoughts of you keep me up. Who is she? Did you meet her at the club? Why do I do this to myself? Why do I care at all? You probably don't think of me at all Just passing through, I'm just another girl to you With wide eyes and dark hair, I'm not that memorable But let me tell you, since that night There hasn't come a day You haven't crossed my mind 